Greetings and welcome to Murder on the Track Shorts, Triangle of Death. In this episode, we're going to uncover some very shocking and pretty profound things. In the full-length documentary, Murder on the Tracks Part 4, Past and Present, we had a look at television's Unsolved Mysteries episodes that were dedicated to Kevin and Don. And if you'll remember, they talked about another case where two young men were run over by a train, similar to Kevin and Don. Six weeks after the investigation was reopened, Richard Garrett came up with a strangely similar case. In Hodgin, Oklahoma, just 200 miles west of Little Rock, two young men lying together on the railroad tracks had been run over by a locomotive in 1984. They were lying motionless on the tracks in a position nearly identical to Kevin and Don's. And that's all they would say about that case. So I decided to do a bit of digging to see what I could find. And what I eventually found overall, like I said, was quite shocking and very profound. So first, here's an article from the Oklahoman about the two young men run over by the train mentioned on Unsolved Mysteries. And this article was originally published on July 20th, 1985. And in it we can see two men were run over by a freight train in a remote area of LaFleur County a year ago, or 1984. And we'll see the exact date coming up. But we see there were a number of people at the time who said it was an accident, said LaFleur County District Attorney Ray Edelstein. But people just don't go lie down on the tracks and go to sleep three miles from nowhere, he added. The bodies of Billy Don Hainline, 21, of Hodgins, and Dennis Decker, 26, of Heavener, were run over by a freight train on a stretch of the Kansas City Southern Railroad, 20 miles south of Potu. I think they were put there, said Sheriff Charles Hurley. It's not uncommon in the drug industry for the people that don't play ball to be eliminated, District Attorney Edelstein said. And they note that a month later a meth lab was found just a mile and a half away from the tracks. That place is a haven for marijuana growers and crank labs, Hurley said. The state medical examiner's office conducted autopsies on the bodies, saying a slight amount of alcohol was in one of the bodies. And remember that, because that's important. We ruled the manner of death as unknown because the level of alcohol wasn't that high. And then there was the fact that they were lying together, said medical examiner investigator John Palmer. And then we fast forward a couple of years to the Oklahoman again, this time on May 25, 1988, which states, an investigation into the railroad track deaths of two Arkansas teenagers has resurrected information about the puzzling 1984 deaths of two LaFleur County men. But Claude Higgins, investigator for LaFleur and Latimer counties, said he believes any similarities between the two sets of deaths is coincidental. I don't believe there'd be any connection whatsoever, Higgins said. So yeah, it's all just a coincidence. And as you'll know from my previous Murder on the Tracks videos, I don't believe in coincidences. At least not the amount of them that you see with all these deaths and murders. Anyways, reading on, Authorities have ruled as accidental the deaths of Billy Don Hainline, 21, of Hodgson, and Dennis Decker, 26, of Heavener. The two were struck by a freight train on rural tracks June 25, 1984. And while I did find a headstone for Billy Hainline, I couldn't find one for Dennis Decker. A LaFleur County coroner ruled that the deaths of Hainline and Decker were accidental, but the state medical examiner's office in Tulsa eventually ruled the manner of death unknown. Higgins said the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation and a 1985 LaFleur County grand jury found no evidence of foul play. Higgins said autopsy showed the amount of alcohol in the blood of Hainline and Decker was near the legal limit for drunkenness, which completely contradicts the reports we saw earlier from 1985, where the medical examiner's office said a slight amount of alcohol was in one of the bodies. And remember the sheriff at the time said I think they were put there. So overall in 1988, when they were investigating the murders of Kevin and Don, it looks to me like they were trying to spin off the 1984 deaths of Billy Hainline and Dennis Decker as being alcohol related, despite what the medical examiner's autopsy originally found. So anyways, that's the case they were talking about on the Unsolved Mysteries episode. So let's have a look at a case that they didn't tell us about, and that you've probably never heard of either. And this is a case of two more young men who were run over by a train. Seriously. About a year after Don Hainline and Dennis Decker were run over by a train. 
And in this article from the Joplin Globe, out of Joplin, Missouri, on September 16, 1985, we learn that 15-year-old Sean Reinick and 13-year-old David Taylor were also run over by a train on August 20, 1985, exactly two years and three days before Kevin and Don were murdered and put on the tracks to be run over by a train. Another so-called coincidence, huh? And you'll notice that the article says that they were run over at about 5 a.m. And I do have to ask, what were a 15-year-old and a 13-year-old doing out at 5 in the morning on a Tuesday? And technically it'd be before 5 a.m., but who knows how long they were out before the train struck them. Newton County Sheriff Mark Bridges said an investigation has produced the theory that the boys were lying with their faces down between the rails when the train passed over them. Foul play has been ruled out. Has that got a familiar ring to it? So the article continues on on another page, and we can see the train engineer told officials he did not see the boys when the train went over the trestle. And remember, they approximate the time that the boys were run over was about 5 a.m. So it was probably pretty dark to begin with, and perhaps it was overcast as well, not allowing any moonlight to come through. At any rate, the train's engineer didn't see the boys. And highlighting what this article is actually about, we can see that Sean Ryanick's brother, Chad, states, We all really want the underpass to stay the way it is. And he's talking about the underpass where the two boys were killed, and the mural that's been painted on it. Here's a zoom in of the entire article in case you want to pause and read the whole thing for yourself. So for those keeping score, that's three sets of two young men that have been run over by freight trains. So all just the coincidence? Well when we dig a little bit more, check out what we find. Looking on the map, Kevin and Don were killed here, David and Sean were killed here, and Billy and Dennis were killed here. I mean, that's pretty close to each other, don't you think? Just another coincidence? Well, here's another. Look what's nestled right in amongst those locations. The Mina Airport, where the operations first set up by Barry Seal in 1982, was bringing in more than 30,000 kilos of cocaine during those years. And it's just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the locations where all these young men were mysteriously run over by trains. Right smack in the middle of those years at the operations at the Mina Airport, as well as Iran-Contra, were operating in full swing. So what do you think? All coincidental? Well, let's zoom out so we can get a better perspective of the locations where three sets of two young men were run over by freight trains. And here's the three locations, and what I've termed the Triangle of Death. Because when you look at the continental United States, and you realize that in a three-year term, there was somehow an epidemic of young men, in pairs no less, accidentally or otherwise getting run over by trains together in such a small area, it goes beyond the believability of just being all a coincidence. And let's quickly have a look at some of the similarities between these young men and what happened to them. In Kevin and Don's case, remember Fami Malik, the state medical examiner, said they were in a deep sleep on the railroad tracks under the psychedelic influence of marijuana. And in Billy and Dennis's case, the 1988 investigator Higgins said investigators concluded the men had fallen asleep on the tracks. So four young men all fell asleep on the tracks and didn't hear a train coming down. In Kevin and Don's case, medical examiner Fami Malik was originally going to try and push a suicide ruling which was quickly shot down by everybody that knew Kevin and Don. And in David and Sean's case, we can see that people in the public were under the impression they committed suicide as well, which was equally shot down by the people who knew them. And looking at Kevin and Don's case, again we see the medical examiner, Fami Malik, saying that they were unconscious and under the psychedelic influence of marijuana, which is ridiculous, of course. And looking at Billy and Dennis's case, we can see the earlier reports state that only a slight amount of alcohol was in one of the bodies. Meanwhile, later reports show investigators in 1988 saying the amount of alcohol in the blood of both was near the legal limit for drunkenness. And also notice, in Kevin and Don's case, authorities originally stated foul play wasn't involved. And we saw in David and Sean's case, foul play has been ruled out. 
and meanwhile on Billy and Dennis's case, we see they said they found no evidence of foul play. So I guess we're expected to believe that everything's just all one big coincidence. But let's go back to Kevin and Don's case, and what we know about that. And right from the get-go of their so-called investigation, we can see the news reporting immediately that the only thing Saline County authorities are sure of in the death of two teenage boys who were hit by a train early Sunday morning is that foul play wasn't involved. And the first thing I have to say is how can you rule out foul play when you have two young men that were run over by a train? I mean, one I can understand as being an accident, but two? And remember, as we learned from the Murder on the Track series, they didn't move a muscle as the train was bearing down on them. Okay, but no foul play, huh? Well, how is it that we learn later from an FBI report that Dr. Burton, who did the second autopsy, found a stab wound located on Don Henry? And how about the paramedics who reported to the scene minutes after the impact was radioed in? They reported that the blood at the scene was darker than it should have been. They also stated that the blood was oozing instead of fresh, and that the skin was colorless, all of which are good indicators that the boys were dead for some time before they were put on the tracks. And how about the fact that all three train engineers saw a green tarp covering the boys as they were bearing down on them? And one of the engineers even showed the so-called investigating officers where the tarp was. And ultimately, the tarp would disappear, and they were told that what they saw was an optical illusion. And speaking of foul play, state medical examiner Fami Malik said that Kevin and Don smoked an estimated 20 joints. Again, a ridiculous statement further shot down by the second autopsy which stated that the amount of marijuana in both their systems was the equivalent to approximately one joint. Or how about the fact that the original so-called investigation completely missed and forgot Kevin's foot on the tracks, only to be found two days later by a member of the Henry family? Or the fact that gunshots were reported shortly before Don and Kevin were run over by the train, and the Saline County Sheriff's Office said they would do tests to determine if those shots came from Don's gun but those tests were never done. Or how about this one, when Don Henry's family got his belongings back from the Saline County Sheriff's Office about six months after the murders, and one of the pockets of Don's jeans was a partial bag of marijuana. So what the hell kind of investigation was this? And they had the nerve to say foul play wasn't involved? You've got to be kidding me. I see nothing but foul play, all on the side of the authorities. And you really have to wonder about the other two sets of victims. Because like I say, I don't believe in coincidences when it comes to stuff like this. And if you haven't already, I would recommend that you make some popcorn, go to YouTube, and start watching the Murder on the Track series. They can also be found, as well as loads more information, at the official site, www.idfiles.com, which is at present undergoing construction to bring you a brand new and improved and revamped site. So thanks for watching, and please share this video, and we'll see you soon with the next installment of the Murder on the Track series.